What's up all you YouTubers? Welcome to my channel. My name is Crypto Dog to the rescue. I uh, just wanted to go over a couple things today. I haven't been on for a little while. Still kind of recovering from my Alaska trip. Um, but uh, did want to go over some, you know, kind of macro overview. It's been, uh, you know, a bit boring on the cryptocurrency market. You know, obviously it's, everything's kind of going sideways. It went down dramatically. We went, I think, around 6,000. Um, for Bitcoin, and now uh, we're kind of sitting around 6,400. And we'll get into all that, but I didn't want to get into some things that we might want to look forward to looking at and uh, some possible catalysts um, and, uh, you know, some sentiment and uh, a couple other things that we'll go over. And, of course, uh, you know, some things, uh, how to make cryptocurrency without, uh, you know, investing or mining and so on and so forth. You can still earn some some coin. And uh, so when the next bull run happens, you got some coins, you're sitting on some free coins, they go up dramatically and you can cash them out. Um, you know, so some things like that. So, uh, you know, kind of showing the screensaver when it comes to kind of like the abyss in space. I mean, we've all kind of in space right now. We're all kind of twirling around in circles and, and looking for the light. And as we can see the light in the top right there, um, you know, that's, that's basically what we're looking for. We're, we're looking for the light. And, um, it's coming. We, I mean, if you can see it and we're going towards it, it's bound to happen. It's just happening slow, just like traveling in space. Um, as, as far as, you know, our patience goes, we've all been hitting walls this year. I think we've all taken some, some losses and offsetted our losses a lot by using tender and so on and so forth, which is great. If it helps, you know, great until it kind of comes to an end. I think tether and all of them will possibly come to an end um, just based on no function of the coin. But, uh, you know, let's get into some things and uh, we'll go from there. So my name is Crypto Dog to the rescue. Please smash the like button, hit the bell, comment below. And uh, it all helps my channel, you know, and the dogs I'll be rescuing in the future. Um, I just got into uh, actually using a dog walking app. And uh, it's, uh, it's pretty cool, actually. Uh, let me make sure that I'm actually showing you what I wanted to show you. So, all right. Uh, yeah, so uh, when it comes to, we'll get into the dog walking thing and all that. So, you know, let's get right into the coin market cap. 214 billion right now. So Bitcoin, 6,400, as I was kind of saying. Ethereum is right around that 300 mark. XRP, dramatically down 34 cents. I mean, Cardano's at 10 cents. I mean, Litecoin's at 57. I mean, wow. I mean, everybody, everything just took a dump. But as you can see, after these these this huge correction that we've had six thousand eight thousand down to six thousand and kind of going back up a little bit sixty four hundred right in there, everything is now starting to get back online with crypto with with Bitcoin. As we all knew, you know, I've been watching the market for you know a good nine months now, and the first thing that I've always noticed was that when Bitcoin price drops, everything seems to go follow it, not e or you know or just go right with it, go up with it, go right with it. It uh, doesn't matter really what coins, but as long as it's in really the top 10, top 20, you can see this change. And when things go sideways, when Bitcoin goes sideways, everything else kind of goes sideways um, as well. 51% um, dominance, and that's why it's doing it. Well, actually, you know, when it was up to 54% or even at 49%, there was starting to get some big changes in Ethereum and Bitcoin. And then other, you know, coins I was starting to see. Um, that didn't fork off Bitcoin as much as, you know, uh, so it, it, it was kind of weird. But now, again, everything's starting to look like it's starting to go back in sync with Bitcoin. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? Well, actually, I think it's a good thing right now because we're coming up hopefully to our cyclical bull run, which we, I think we all believe there's a cyclical one coming. But is there really? And, you know, I hate to ask questions like that, but we really got to keep that eyebrow up and not get complacent with possible bull run coming. You know, the probability obviously is in our favor. There's always that probability that it's not going to happen. A non-occurrence, probability of non-occurrence. So um, I'm ranting, but let's uh, kind of move forward into some changing, you know. I'm recovering from my Alaska trip still, so my, my throat's all, you know, jacked up um, and I'm tired as hell, but I'm still working and I'm still getting some stuff done, so. Uh, you know, Veritasium is our 25, 24 hour change your top right now, 15%. Ontology, good to see, 14%. VeChain, Nebulous, and Huobi token. So that's the top fives that we got going on here. 
again, as you can see, when they all kind of sway up, you know, everything seems to kind of sway up. I mean, you know, everybody, some coins have their own, but really when it comes down to it, they're all kind of following Bitcoin at this point or Ethereum and or. So it's kind of a good thing to see at this point. So let's get into some news real quick. Um, Wall Street. Wall Street demand for crypto rises. Exchange activity thrives in bear market. So basically what this is all going off of is the question is, is will banks and Wall Street come into the market? Um, and and they're talking about Goldman Sachs and JP Morgan. They've disclosed their ongoing initiative to serve clients interested in cryptocurrencies as an asset class. So, OK, good. Great. They've all said it, you know, um, uh, and they all want it to happen. And, and Wall Street firms, do they want to enter? They absolutely do. Um, they want ETFs. They want, you know, long term bets, macro, so on and so forth. They see that as great things to do. Um, now, with that being said, you got the banks, okay? The banks have already said many, many times, JP Morgan, which is Jamie Demon, and I can't remember what Goldman Sachs is guy um, at the moment, but uh, David Solomon, new appointed Goldman Sachs chairman. So they all do. They, they want blockchain. They don't want cryptocurrency. They want to be in the crypto sector, but not cryptocurrency coins. This, I don't know if that makes sense, but blockchain is what they want. They want to use that in their infrastructure, in the intranet of their business. But when it comes to using this coin as an external thing, they don't want it. They, they think they're, they're, they're not good, that these are what is what Warren Buffett's talking about is just nothing and everybody's putting money into something that, you know, is just an idea and it has no tangible, you know, value to it. No value, basically. Tangible value or tangible value to it. So banks is really... Um, kind of the iffy one right now because they want to leverage that and they want to refuse to use something that they can't leverage like decentralization but they do love blockchain they do love that public ledger they do love that nothing can be gone or go away and um it's going to you know show and make irs things everything easier on them when it comes to internal use um in it for a business for a centralized business now when it comes to wall street they absolutely want to come in. They want. They see the power of cryptocurrency and how much money people are throwing into it and how much volatility is into it and how they can actually read this stuff a little bit. I've talked to some of my guys um, that are still playing the stock market. They don't have, know nothing about the cryptocurrency world, but they're starting to raise an eyebrow towards it just based on what other people are saying. People are moving out from the stock market into the cryptocurrency market or dabbling in it. And they're kind of seeing that they can possibly read this more than we can. Again, when the sentiment is basically fearful, they, you know, people like the, you know, that are used to the stock market, they jump in because they know the cryptocurrency is not going anywhere. So they're going to jump in when they think that it's hit low and, um, and, and everybody's fearful and jumping out. But when everybody jumps back in, they just kind of hold their ground or they step out once they hit a certain mark and they're out. It's quick money for them. Um, and uh, it's just an extra step to them have a wallet really is kind of what their whole shtick is, is they don't like the wallet thing and but it's easy to click click around as long as it's safe so um, again there's just a lot of a lot of you know odd things that you know the Wall Street stock guys need to get used to with that being said SEC needs to come in and level the playing field Wall Street's not going to come in because it's making them make their stocks look bad it's as simple as that they don't want to come in and start doing things and we you know with wash trading involved and you know tether corruption and so on and so forth all this manipulation is really keeping wall street out of the market once the sec can come in and level the playing field and show the stock investors that it's very very similar to stock exchange the crypto exchange market is that they will come in a much easier that it's a much more easier flow knowing that the sec has their back when things get cornered, when things get manipulated, when wash trading haps, happens and their money is gone. Again, we've had a lot of manipulation, a lot of hackers, a lot of things like that, and too much money has been taken out of this market. There's no way that big money is going to come in. So um, that's just my, you know, poor sight on this until the SEC can really play, you know, level the playing field. And this kind of goes uh, something to think about when it comes to the stock market and the Bitcoin price, okay? Overstock.com, their stock and Bitcoin price. It's a very uncanny correlation. And uh, this was really an interesting article that you can look at uh, Coindesk here. And uh, they were, they've been in the market. They've been using Bitcoin 
uh, taking Bitcoin for payment since 2014. Uh, or was it 2013? I believe it was 2014 is what they said in here. Yeah, payments in 2014. So um, basically, and this is June, January 9th, 2014 up on this top graph, and this is Bitcoin on top. So basically they're saying that there's, there's correlation here. This was 2014. When Bitcoin was going down, there seemed to be a correlation of lag on this overstock.com stock price. Now that was 2014. Now moving forward here to 2017, okay, well it's still 2014, but they moved forward all the way up for years here. So 2017 is kind of starting right here, if you can see my mouse. And Overstock took a nice little spike up and then Bitcoin kind of lagged, you know, just behind it. So there's some lagging going on and they all kind of stick around the same, same area. And now, the correlation even gets tighter. So now you can even see it even more. Just, I mean, just looking back, you know, stepping back and looking at it from a huge overview like this, you can see where they've squared off these drops and these tops. And these little drops right here, and these little these little drops and tops. I mean, you know, not it doesn't happen every time, but you can definitely see that the correlation is definitely tightening with these things. Now, you know, what does this mean, obviously, is what I'm getting at, is when Bitcoin goes up, the stock price of overstock goes up eventually or vice versa. So if you don't want to stay in a voluntary market like this, you know, I'm talking to the people that have got in and they were looking for kind of some quick money and it's not happening and they're taking a loss. It's like the rest of us. You know, I've had watch people on YouTube that have been on since 2017, early 2017. And, you know, everybody looked at them like they were geniuses, you know, because um, they made money because really this, you know, the market went up. So you're obviously going to make money if you're holding coins. And now that we're actually doing this is actually what, you know, stock market actually looks like, you know, more correlated with the stock market. All this, but not so much volatility, but when things go up and everybody expects it to and it goes down, everybody starts dumping out. Well, you know, these guys have been following in YouTube since 2017 they don't know what to do with themselves. So it's it's kind of making me wonder, you know, their their savviness when it comes to, to the cryptocurrency market or were they all just lucky just based on Bitcoin in the market going up in 2016, 2017. So questions that I ask myself sometimes. So that's why, again, I'm not a financial advisor. Do make your own decisions, do your own research. But this is the whole reason why I do my own research and don't listen to anybody. Um, you know, based on experience and, you know, and actually doing things that I thought that they were right about and they were absolutely wrong about. So, um, you know, take it with a grain of salt, you know, and people tell you one thing, you know, that or when, when you see one thing in the market, you know, as far as, oh, this is all going up, stay out. Because again, it, you know, you may get FOMO and it goes back up, but, you know, Historically speaking, we're not even in that time yet. We're in August. So we just got to get our hold, you know, hold on, you know, sit on our thumbs a little bit longer. It hurts. Nobody likes it. But, you know, the payoff is going to be grand. You know, I'll, I'll kind of that's my opinion on it. So I did want to touch on a couple of things. Uh, this is the ways that I'm making cryptocurrency without putting any cryptocurrency in it or mining for it. So this crowd holding is a, you know, people put their projects up, a cryptocurrency project, a blockchain, whatever it is, function of the coin. And um, they want people's, uh, you know, two cents about it. So I, I did two of them, I believe. I, I, I put my two cents in on two projects and I got 120 up. So that's great. You know, is it yep, worth a lot of money right now? No, it's not worth a lot of money. But if we all think that it's going to go up in the next couple months, well, I'm going to be sitting on a bunch of yup. And once I hit 500 yup, I can start cashing it out, turning it into Bitcoin or Ethereum, turning it into fiat and paying myself out. So this is kind of a long term thing with this crowd holding. But hey, you know, you know, this is what I do for a living. You know, this is part of my business. You know, this is all this cryptocurrency and so on. Once I start making a profit on it, it's free money. I mean, it's free money now. So really, when it comes down to it. And uh, Empower is the same way. You know, I touched on Empower where I was actually making two, three hundred dollars on it, and uh, and I was, and and I still am, just basically because the price of the coin went down. And that's why I'm down to forty three dollars right now. I'm making like five, ten, you know, uh, Empower coins a day right now. 
But again, it was, it was, you know, the price of it was quite dramatic two weeks ago and everything dumped. This obviously dumped too. So I'm just going to hold on, keep making my money. It's just like Facebook. You make your daily goals. They give you like a spin at a wheel or something to make some extra cash. They have surge times where if you post on a surge time, you just make money because they've made, they've expected money and they made too much than more than they expected. So that all my money goes back in the, in the, in the community. It's crazy. This is completely decentralized Facebook. And a lot of people use this to sell, sell and just kind of advertise and try to make money. And, and, and that's where you just, I just kind of move on. But you know, it's just like Facebook really. And I'm making connections and posting things and it's, it's kind of cool. It's great, you know, to kind of see. And one last thing that I'm doing has nothing to do with uh, cryptocurrency is this dog walker app. You know, I'm, I'm, I just wanted an extra stream of income, you know, just to kind of safety net myself. And I found this dog walker with WAG. So it's like Uber for your, for your dog, if you need your dog ever walked. So kind of an interesting thing. So if anybody's interested, you know, uh, you know, email me or, you know, leave a comment below and I'll get back to you on that. But I've been uh, back from Alaska for what, two, three days now. And I've been working for two days out of the three just cause I want to. So it's kind of great. You know, I'm making passive income here. I'm making passive income here. I'm making passive income here. You know, and my bot's doing great on this market right now. I've been making 20, 15 percent on all my on all my trades. It's I mean, everything's looking on the up and up right now. You know, I'm, I'm uh, you know, I'm still a manager of a security company, um, but I'm actually a license uh, holder. So they're, I'm making residuals off the license. So it's, it's you know, doing great. Um, you know, life is good right now. So the one last thing I didn't want to touch on for everybody's sake is this sentiment. You know, I was trying to look for the crypto fear and greed index and it's actually down right now. They're doing some, uh, I don't know, I, I don't know if it's gone offline or, or if they're doing some maintenance on it, but I can't find it right now. And I really just wanted to touch on why sentiment is so important in trading. Sentiment, and I want to read this real quick, okay? Sentiment analysis in trading is an underused part of a trader's arsenal. There are also many misconceptions about sentiment. The crowd thinks that when sentiment is high, it is time to buy. Let me make sure that I got this on the right thing. Okay, cool. Um, and when it is low, it is time to sell. So we, I think we all know that when it's time, when, when, you know, sentiment is high, you don't buy because everybody's in, everybody's buying. You just wait. And when the sentiment goes low, that's the time to buy in, not sells. But that's usually the first initial reaction we get is, uh Oh, everybody's fearful. Get out too. That's, you know, actually again in the stock market. No, that's, that's the wrong type of thinking. Unless you're a day trader, unless you're a really quick day trader. That's the that's the really kind of some of the mentality you want to have is this sentence right here. Um, sentiment is high, time to buy. Sentiment is low, time to sell. So I'm very anti crowd mentality. This is this guy, not me. Um, and he's a solitary trader. Um, he has tried interacting with others, but in general, it has not been for him as a as he gets swayed by group thinking. And I disagree with that. Group group thinking is obviously much more um, uh, productive than solitary trading, but you do have to watch out for being swayed by group thinking. So it doesn't fit your parameters of percentages, then it doesn't, you know, you, you can always disagree with any group, but if it does, you know, and, and, but your group and you should be aligned with all of your, your thinking and the percentages when making thought decisions, you know, group decisions, but that's just me. Um, so looking at this stool, this is a great stool. Market analysis is really what you're looking for. Technical, fundamental, sentiment, so how much percentage do you really put on your technical analysis? How much percentage do you really put on fundamental? How much percentage do you put on the sentiment? And really, this is really your three factor to get to your market analysis. And your group should all be on the same wavelength of what you know and what they know. And everybody should actually have the same around about, you know, percentage of what they're thinking of, whether they're macro trading, mic ma or macro trading, micro trading, you know, swing trading, core trading, Sentiment should always be a really, really big thing in your toolbox. And, you know, you need to get a, everybody needs to get a good feel for the market, how the crowd reaches uh, extreme levels. Um, and you often see them being wrong. You know, there's just things you really have to really watch out for. And I guess the three things that um, I really, I won't say the three things, but the things that I actually really see in this market in sentiment when it comes to the market is, we have a lot of people come in the cryptocurrency market that have known nothing about exchanges. Stock exchanges, trading, we're doing that with coins. 
So we should really learn how to do this with stocks and so on and so forth, just to kind of get a baseline of how things work, how they should work anyways. And because they're not working in the same way, we're getting manipulated, you know, whether it be with tether wash trading, um, uh, hackers coming in, 825 million plus being taken out just this year. I mean, do, do you do we really think that that Wall Street and banks are really going to come into crypto coins, currency coins, not just blockchain like the banks, but cryptocurrency coins? If we're seeing that much manipulation, how safe is people's money in ETF? How safe is anybody's money when it comes to using fidelity and so on and so forth when they try to guarantee these things for people that you're going to make some sort of percentage? And you can't. Not, not, when, not when there's too, this much volatility and this much, I would say, rookies in the markets. We have a lot of rookies. Everybody's looking for quick money and it doesn't happen that way. And the SEC is coming in and the CFTC is coming in and basically saying, this isn't how it works, guys. You may have been eating your cake and eat it too for the past couple of years, but it's not happening anymore. So that's kind of what we're, uh, we're dealing with at this moment. So um, like I said, it's a bear market at the moment. I think we're just shaking off. Got a lot of the big guys here. And uh, just, uh, you know, I wouldn't say the big guys, but the uh, the people that have all got in and thinking that they're coming in for uh, some quick money and it's just not happening. And we've all, you know, got hurt this year. I mean, hurt. And I've offset up. I'm, I'm really offsetting my money at this point and it's working out really good. So the next great. So the next time that we have a big bull run, I'm hugely in the money. I'm not having to wait to get in the red into the green so fast um, before we, um, you know, before I become you know, profitable and, um, you know, actually free from working for the man. So, you know, my name is Crypto Dog to the rescue. Please smash the like button, hit the bell, comment below. It has no value to you guys, but it has great value to me and the dogs I will be rescuing. Uh, just remember that I will, I'm still doing the 100 subscriber giveaway and um, uh, please leave your Ethereum address, Bitcoin address, and so I can uh, send 20 bucks to the winner at 100 subscribers. You guys have a great day. Keep up the grind.